Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome back to our channel. For a lot of our subscribers, you could also have just heard, we are Samjula. Samjula. People have created, have like, they really? Brad and, and uh, what's her? Brangelina. Yeah, well we are apparently Samjula. Samjula. Welcome back to Samjula. That's weird. Where we, <laughs> it is kind of odd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are we going to do in today's video? Clue them into the fun they are about to be bespoke. We are going to be doing a little bit more demo. Just a little bit. Everybody <laughs> loves demo. we got to put a hole in our house. And the floor. And the floor. And the wall. Jeez. This is a big one. <laughs> a very big one. And it all happens in one day because, well, you're just going to find out. So come along as we decide to rip apart the front of our house. Rip apart some of the floor and hopefully get a new door in before it gets too wet. First step is to take this old door out. We'll try and be careful with the storm door and not destroy it in the event someone may want it locally, but otherwise getting it out is the name of the game. I have a crowbar out here too if you want to. No, it's just sticky. No, that's strong wood. You can see the hole right there that went all the way through. It's actually not in too bad shape. Well, once again, we have a hole to the outside of our house. We do. We have done this. Okay, we've not done this door before, but... We've done an opening bigger than this. <laughs> we have. If you guys have not seen that video, when we did our kitchen renovation, we took an eight-foot wide section out of the wall and house and everything. That was wild. Yeah, it was wide open. <laughs> that was a one-day tear-out and rebuild, like today is. Yes. So... The door came out pretty easily. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. It is uh, pretty gnarly and rotten. The door jams definitely toast. The plywood floor that was underneath the door sill, not too bad shape. That is not the original flooring, of course, from the mobile home. So whoever did that floor repair in the past did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Kudos. 
We're still taking it out though because it's not the same thickness as all the other plywood we have in the house and it looks a little gnarly too. Might as well. We're already here. Might as well. So what we're going to do next is start on the left side of the door opening. I'm going to take out the wall stud and take the bottom plate back to the adjacent stud that's over there. I want to build out a new bottom plate, new wall studs and everything. We've got to change the whole framing opening for this because we have a larger residential style door to go in this wall of the mobile home. <laughs> so we're going to start by taking that stud out, but then transition to doing the floor repair so that we have new floor, new wall stud, jump over, Take the wall stud out floor and do the, the same, I guess. We're eking yeah. over, so there's, n it's going to be held up. The house is still going to be held up. We're not taking out the whole big section for it to theoretically fall. Right. Yeah, we want to avoid having to put a shore wall in place or a temporary support structure. So by taking one out, replacing it, and moving to the next, we should be fine. That being said, we're not mobile homologists or telling you guys you can do that with your place. This is what we're doing. Yeah, it's what we're doing. Let's go. With the bottom plate cut and the siding separated from the stud, it should be pretty easy just to pull it out considering that the walls in the mobile home are assembled with staples. Yeah, the walls, staples. That's how they did it. Makes it easier for us. Yeah. And they call that a header. Hmm. <laughs> I don't call it a header. Pull it straight towards you? Yeah, I'm just making sure that I'm not about to cause more damage than I want to. Oh, wow. You make that look easy, honey. Because the house is built cheap. Wow, look at that. I know, I noticed that. Look at this. I think it's had a little bit of rot over the years. With the wall stud taken out and the little bit of the plywood started, we're going to go ahead and take out the rest of the plywood in this section and see what we're working with underneath with framing members, floor joists, room joists, that kind of stuff, and then put our new plywood down next before we move on. So, flooring coming up next. That, that's not mine. That one fits better. Do you want to do that? I like my bar. My prize bar. That. Ew! What? There's a bug! Hey, we live here too. The cat usually keeps these things out. <laughs> Cat's useless. Look how rotten the end of these floor joints are. Woo! Ready? Yeah. That looks fine. It's the same height as this. Okay. Which this is good. Shorter. Yeah. This is the same height. It's a little bit off here, but that's because the floor joint sag. Yeah. But we'll level that. But this is good. Alright, I think I'm gonna leave it in place for now. I don't want to Screw attach it, it in yet. case we need it up. Okay. Alright, this shows you how it does. It has sagged a little bit because it goes in fine over here. But if I move this down, I mean... It's off just a hair. It is off. Not a lot, but that's a good way to check. You make sure you measure a stud that's fully supported. You know you're good on your length or height. 
And so down here, I know, I'll just force this up. <laughs> Good enough. I need, to, help. I need to measure and make sure where this goes and stuff. This is where we're really glad that we have our new roof with the overhang because it's raining but it's not blowing in the house yet. We have a tarp and tape and everything ready to seal this up. We planned ahead. We prepared for rain but as long as it doesn't start blowing in on the floor or anything we're gonna leave it open because why not? It's a room with a view. So this box is for a integrated smoke alarm or smoke detector system. We're going to put this back up and we're going to get some of those hardwired smoke detectors because it's a pretty cool feature that we've not had before. This what I just put up is called a king stud. It runs from the floor to the top plate, full height of your wall. What we're going to add beside it is called a jack stud. That goes from the floor to the bottom of your header. What's a header? Good question. Header is the board that goes left to right across your door or window opening and supports the weight of the roof above, disperses it, transfers it to the jack studs and down to the floor. King stud supports the roof in this area. Jack stud supports the header, which in turn supports the roof. So king stud, jack stud, header, box. We're going to disconnect the wires for this and drill a hole through our king stud to bring this over to the left and still leave room for our header and jack stud. We're just not focusing on it right now because since we don't have the drywall or anything to install, we can keep it out of our way and keep working on sealing this opening up. Oh, well, that, that was easy. easy. What are you, a one hit wonder? Ah! Yes. <laughs> We've put up ourselves a nice little Dutch door from a green tarp. This is going to allow airflow to still come through and keep any of the blow by or the rain from blowing in and splashing on the floor. It's not really that bad outside, but it's just enough to where we figure we put it up just to not mess up all the hard work we've done so far. If it ends up getting a lot worse with the rain, I can easily just fold the rest of it up and tape it in place. So works pretty good. Convertible construction door. It was an extra piece and it pretty much fits so we'll see if it works. I think it looks good. We're going to be using floor leveler so it'll kind of fill in any of the gaps anyhow. We have the plywood down so our floor is buttoned up again. Yay! That's nice. We don't have to consciously think where we're walking and everything as we walk. I have the left side of the doorway opening already done, already rough framed in with the king and jack stud. 
and I put my bottom plate down on this side of the wall, the right side of the doorway. Next thing I'm going to do is put the king stud in place, and as you will see, I'm going to have to hammer it into place. I have double checked my measurements, they are correct, so that means that this section of the wall has sagged about an inch to an inch and a quarter. I don't think it did it while we've been doing our work. I think that's just been deterioration over time and sagging with water damage and stuff. Mm -hmm. At least that's my assumption. Either way, we're going to have to pick up the wall a little bit or just hammer it to get it to fit. I'm going to go wreck it, Ralph, on a <laughs> constructive side. Please. I can't pick the house up. Fix it, Felix. Yeah. <laughs> um, while we have the camera stopped and everything, what are your thoughts and I don't know woman's perspective of this endeavor I feel like I'm just like tunnel vision work and just get it done so I think we kind of realized or I am even more that there is frustration with absolutely any job you do like, yes but we've not been fighting no like just letting you guys know you're like in the heat of the moment like trying to get the plywood down and the battery dies and you're like oh come on and so you have to go and like find another battery and it's just things like that over and over and over again but someone has a tendency to get angry when she does projects apparently <laughs> huh i thought it's been going pretty good i mean other than it being hot and extremely humid because the sun is now out which is great no more rain but humid <laughs> really humid <laughs> Okay, let's get back to it. All right. Put it up in place. All right, we have the rough opening totally done. We have our header in place, our little cripple studs. I think that's what they're called, the tiny little things up top. They're all put into place, everything looks great. But we have two problems. One, we don't have enough flashing, weather, sealant, whatever. Mm -hmm. Peel and stick, window, door flashing. We don't have enough to do it. And two, there's a big thunderstorm heading this way. The second one today. Yeah. Yeah, this one is larger and it is literally heading pretty much straight towards us. So we're going to stop our work and we're going to put all of our hopes and dreams in a $1.50 tarp from Northern Tool and a roll of Gorilla Tape. We're going to tape up the whole door opening, seal it up, and then we got to go to the hardware store to get more weather stripping tape, plus pick up the boys from Mimi's house. So hopefully we will get this door in before tonight because we have critters that we don't want to get in the house. I don't think we have critters that we want in the house so much as we got kidders we don't want out of the house. True. We have a little cat. So, all right, let's go. It is nice to have a new plywood floor. That's nice. Okay, good enough. Whoop. Good enough. Let's go to the store and get back quick. We're back from the store and we have the flashing tape we needed and the tarp is still here, which is great. There's no water inside the house, which is really good. 
because it was a giant thunderstorm that went through. What we're going to do next is go ahead and put a pencil line on the aluminum siding from the inside and cut it out so that it matches the size of the new door because it's wider and taller. I need to clean up the old silicone and putty and everything off of this so it'll have a better seal whenever we put the Lexel on to put the door on. What you standing under? Looks nice. You're not in the rain. This is my new evergreen porch cover. $1.50. Porch is slippery, almost did a split. <laughs> All right, I have the door opening prepped. I used some flashing tape and taped out the pan of the door. I think that might be the term. Put down several layers and did it as best we can, given this is a mobile home retrofit of a residential door in a mobile home. So it's kind of not by the book unless you're reading the same book we are, which is called Winging It, Volume 12. Page 37. <laughs> Tell them and Vanna White and show everything that we have behind us, the exciting part of this whole venture. So here is our beautiful door. I love that it has the window on top so it can let more light into the house because we are all about natural light. We love all the windows. So having more windows on the front of the house is awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> I like the style that it's a little bit craftsman style or actually kind of reminds me of shaker style cabinets in the kitchen. Um, it's a, a style that we both like. It's, I don't know, it's white, which is cool. And it's a pre-hung exterior door, which is even cooler. And it's huge. <laughs> we went from a 32 by 73 to a 36 by 80. So, I mean, we are. Well, I got a doorologist here. Step back, everybody. Well, as far as the steps to install this door, I'm not 100% sure because I have not installed a pre-hung exterior door before, but my assumption is that we will unpack it first. It's probably handy. Read the instructions, if there are any, and probably we'll just apply a bead of Lexel sealant around the molding or trim that's on the outside, put it into the opening, shim it, plumb it, square it, and then attach it with screws through the casing or jam on the inside to the king and jack sides that we framed into the wall. I don't know that we've ever, I have ever helped with doing an exterior door that's not mobile homes because we did the back door, taking it off and putting it in. No, this will be my first. I've never put an exterior door in before. Not like this. I mean, we've swapped out slabs. We've done one in your workshop. Well, that's not a house. Right. That was a junkyard find. <laughs> Dumpster find. Thanks, hon, but that one doesn't count. Oh. So cool. This is a total first for us, and we are realizing that at this point. <laughs> We're crazy. We just go for it. We do. So let's go for it. Let's finish this thing. Let's go. I found the instructions. That's a tall door. Of course, we're not tall people. Hey, makes our place feel even more palacious.
We are working on making the mortise for the deadbolt larger. What we have with the lock set does not match what comes from the factory. So I've got a Forstner bit. I'm going to drill the four corners out and then I will chisel and sculpt the rest so that this metal plate recesses in flush, nice and neat, and everything fits. Nothing is ever easy. If you don't know that yet, know it. Nothing's ever easy. We bought a pre-hung door, brand new lock set, and still had to file at the striker plates and mortise out the deadbolt thing and everything of the sort. That being said, maybe that's, I don't know, maybe we just got a limit of a door, but we still made it work. It locks, it closes, it's all smooth, and looks good. Move on! <laughs> yes, yes, let's move on to something else. We're done filing the deadbolts. There we have it. The door is installed and it latches good and locks good. And, and it looks good. Looks very good, yes. It doesn't, uh, it's not able to shine as much as it can because of <laughs> it its just surroundings. It looks like a white light right now. <laughs> right, but it's very, very nice. So the next thing we're going to do is put some more screws through the door casing into the wall. There are about, I think, another three or four points that we need to attach it. And then we're just going to do it for good measure. Not because we're worried about this door stopping intruders or being a security thing. Thankfully, we don't live in an area where that's something we really have to be concerned about. We more want to make sure that it is just 100% locked down, tightened, beefing. We have two boys. We do have two boys. And they're rough, so yeah. They are rough. So we're going to do that. And then I'm also going to go around the outside everywhere and caulk it up all the way to the house and in between all the joints and everything to make it weather tight. Got a Kawasaki saw. <laughs> what? Uh, I think it's a Dazuki. these electrical wires. So we use this great stuff to weather seal or insulate around our doors and windows. Um, the blue can is for windows and doors. It doesn't expand as much as like the red and I think black do. So hopefully one can will do the whole door. It's all done now, so let's check it out. Nice. It makes you look short. I I could see why. It's <laughs> way up there. <laughs> You think it's a little bit of an upgrade from what we had before? I thought you were going to say it's a little bit big, isn't it? Because no, it's like pretty it. big. <laughs> All right, so here, here's how Sam's mind works. We wanted a residential style door. Yes, we knew it was going to be taller. Cool, no problem. You were kind of like, well, why don't we just do a 36 inch wide door? That's what's in there and not have 32. to reframe. 32, yeah, sorry. Not have to reframe the wall. Sam, on the other hand, a little bit of a uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call this Forward thought process, thinking. I guess. I'm like, no, if we're going to do a new door, we might as well do 36. It's kind of the industry standard for entryway doors, plus it's wheelchair accessible. Not that we plan on being a wheelchair or anyone else, but it's, you know, if you're going to do it, do it 
well and it'll make it a lot easier to get in new furniture say a couch or something like that i don't like that thinking that's scarier to me than <laughs> oh gosh that means you want to go shopping <laughs> No, but it will be easier to get stuff like that in and out because it has been a nightmare to get yeah. those in a, the little door. Yes. So. And with our refrigerator, did we have to take the doors off our fridge? I can't remember. We'll say I yes. we did. Okay, she thinks we did, so we totally did. So, yeah, a 36-inch wide opening, very nice. Which is not something a lot of people with homes need to think about or really probably ever do think about. But mobile home doors are not only shorter, but they're skinnier. And that you know yes this door is made for two by six walls mm -hmm. and we only have two by four so we're gonna have to do a little bit of finagling with the molding when it comes to finishing it out but it's also worth it it's yeah. not gonna mess up how it works or anything like that it's just gonna have a little bit more of a bump out than normal it'll just be that much more custom bespoke that's another term a lot of reviewers over across the Atlantic, you'll know the term bespoke more than a lot of Americans do, but I like that term, bespoke. Another thing that we hadn't really mentioned is cost. Mm. Um, it was, I called one of the local mobile home stores to see if they had any um, doors. I didn't even ask about storm door really, just any like entry doors. And they had a combo which was all together for just over six hundred dollars so, for a plop and drop door you know yeah take it out put another one at spot so that was, was like 620 and so we're like wow that's a lot so we went and we did shopping we found that home depot had better priced doors than lowe's did mm -hmm. um we did have to drive farther to go to home depot but Enjoy all that. in all we saved two hundred dollars two hundred bucks for going uh, what 20 minutes further down the road not bad and getting bigger because otherwise it would have been the same exact size and stuff like that so oh you mean from the mobile home door to the home depot door yes oh i thought you meant between lowe's and home depot no i started out with the mobile home store yes that's where you lost me i also didn't pick that up in reality when you actually were telling me that in the car I just thought Lowe's was more expensive for some reason. Mm. I just believe what you tell me. Well, this was actually more beefing and cheaper than the mobile home store. Yeah. So. Yeah. Win-win. You just got to reframe your whole living room. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's got to look like this for a little while. It's all right. At least it's not cold outside right now. It is weather tight. The rain can hit it. We won't have a leaky yeah. door way it goes all right well that's going to end this part of the video uh, saga we have our door installed it is weather tight and looks great well guys hope you enjoyed this part of our renovation obviously we are not done there's lots more fun to be had so if you're new or haven't yet subscribed consider it this is kind of what we do along with every other thing in the world we're definitely DIYers thanks guys for coming along Leave a comment below. We love to read them, and we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. See ya. Bye. Put a bunch of layers down and did it in the best possible possible possible. Wow. Hey hun. Yeah. Doorknob goes on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Just saving you some work. Thank you, honey. The doorologist here. Step back everybody. I googled. <laughs> is that what that smell is did, did you google in here you were googling right there weren't you uh-huh
If you're just coming into the series right now, you might want to stick along. Stay tuned. <laughs> stick there along. <laughs> Ow! I mean, we could it change was... it up. We could start a new trend, right? <laughs> it was the closest to where I was at. <laughs> Kind of the industry standard for entryway doors, plus it's weird, weird, plus it's wheelchair accessible. Every single time it gets your face. Oh, but my face is here now. I'm gonna close the door because we're doing video. If you're just seeing this video for the first, well, if you're seeing us for the first time. Here, you want me to say it? Yeah. Okay. Then you start the recording.